So how do you actually invest in alternative investments? What's that look like? What, how much money do you need? And, and what kind of places can you put it in? That's what we're gonna share in this video today. All right, so if you've ever read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, great book, by the way, highly recommend it if you haven't done so already. He opens your mind to this whole new world of alternative investments, right? You see about real estate investing, he talks about oil and gas, he talks about all these things you'd be doing outside of the traditional mainstream financial advisor stuff. However, how do you do it? He never gives you the how-to, does he? It drives you nuts. He just tells you, this is what I do, this is how you make lots of money, and then you're left to your own devices. Horrible way to do investing. This video is gonna show you what to actually do. How can you actually invest in these alternative investments based on my experience and hundreds of my clients' experiences as well. All right, so now you know a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today. I wanna to talk about my background because I didn't even know what alternative investments are. I talk about this in other videos. We talk about Main Street investing versus Wall Street investing. I was a Wall Street investor. I was a financial advisor, AKA a salesman in a suit, trying to sell you on mutual funds, right? That was supposed to be the thing. You could buy annuities, you could buy mutual funds, these retirement accounts, and everything else. Stuff your money in these 401ks and IRAs and Roth IRAs and, and someday you'll be financially meager. You know, you can barely just have enough to live on and you could be a cheap old person too, right? You know, that's kind of what I was teaching people to do as a financial advisor. Now, of course, that wasn't the dream I was selling. I was selling the dream like they'd be able to retire on whatever beach. I just didn't tell them that that beach was going to be in freaking Alaska on a bad snowy rainy day. You know, I didn't realize that they'd have to be in a cheap place to even be able to do that. And so that's the difference, guys. But I started out as a financial advisor. I was selling people on that, that dream of putting your money away in mutual funds and someday retiring. However, after several years, I then said, my dad reached out to me and said, Chris, I need some help. I need some financial advice. Understand that my dad was like the epitome, the poster child of what someone should do when they take a financial advisor's advice. This guy was the ultimate penny-pinching saver, right? I had somebody on YouTube make a comment, they're like, obviously he didn't save enough. I'm like, well, obviously you don't know, so stop judging, Mr. Judgy, right? Because the truth is, like, this guy was packing money away into his 401k, getting the match, doing everything else. And even after all of those years, doing that and also paying off his debt in 18 years, including his mortgage. Guys, he had did better, much better than the average American. And then when I had to tell him, I said, Dad, listen, because you only got about $250,000, $300,000 because the Y2K took away some of your retirement account, well, that means you can only have about five or six years to live if, unless you have Social Security to help bail you out. And that's not what he wanted to hear. If you Believe it or not, you know, most people don't want to say, listen, you should try to you know, die in the next five or six years so you don't run out of money, okay? And, uh, and he's like, well, what do I do? And I couldn't find an option for him that I felt comfortable with. Nothing that I felt comfortable putting my own dad in. Now, it's different when financial advisors you know, talk to random clients that aren't their own parents, right? But once you're parents, you want to make sure that that strategy works. Do I put him in the stock market? Well, yeah, he could make more returns over here, but what if the market goes down? I don't have any control over that. I'm a financial advisor. What am I supposed to know, right? I don't have the future. I don't have a crystal ball. It broke a long time ago. You know, it fell out of my bag and like, oh, you know, it's sad. But you know, like I don't have a financial, you know, a little financial crystal ball. Neither do you. And so I couldn't put him in those things. I could put him in guaranteed things, but financial advisors that offer guaranteed things are like pay you like this much. They're like pay you like nothing. And so I knew that I was, I was stuck. And that's when my friend Doug came in the picture. Now, Doug, I trained to be a financial advisor, but he actually went to go do this thing called real estate investing. And I thought, okay, he's gonna play around that place for a time, but then he'll come back and work for me again as a financial advisor and we could start partnering on and, and start to take over the world, right? Well, when I called up Doug, he had no interest in working with me. In fact, Doug was doing awesome. He said, man, life is great right now. We've partnered on some real estate deals with my dad and I. So my dad and I have done this stuff. And my dad's income has now doubled from his job because of the money we're making in real estate. I was like, wait a minute, hold on. You de your dad in just four or five months has now doubled his income? He's like, yeah, it's awesome. His dad was financing all the real estate deals and his son was doing all the work. I said, that's crazy. That's too good to be true. There's no way my little financial advisor brain can comprehend that. He said, well, Chris, that's what's happening. He's like, Chris, if you're really serious about this, he's like, and I don't think you are because obviously you're arguing with me that stocks are somehow better, which we all know they're not. If you're really serious about this, go get this book, Who Took My Money by Robert Kiyosaki. It's a lesser known rich dad, poor dad book. And then also start listening to this AM talk radio show that was on because this is pre-YouTube, right? We didn't have YouTube videos to show each other. So he's like, listen to this live, you know, AM talk radio show with these real estate investors. So I did. And guys, I was blown away because I didn't realize 
that it wasn't about accumulating all this money to save up. It was actually about getting cash flow, passive income, just like Robert Kiyosaki teaches in Rich Dad, Poor Dad, but now I was actually seeing it be applied. So I started to do the same thing. I actually quit being a financial advisor when I realized it wasn't helping clients because they weren't able to retire comfortably. They could retire, they just had to retire with government assistance for the most part. And then two, financial advisors couldn't even retire themselves and they're supposed to know everything, right? Wrong, they don't. They're just as broke as almost anybody else as I've met in my life. And so as a result, I quit. I said, I'll never teach about money again, not even on YouTube. Yeah, I'll not do that again. I will just go teach ballroom dancing and I'll be a mortgage broker. But I had to know what they knew. I had to learn these different strategies. And that's what I wanna talk about with you today. So one, what is one of those strategies? Rentals. Now you could go buy your own rental. That's what most people have done. I'll tell you this much. Even if you don't know what you're doing, <laughs> it's possible you could actually make a lot of money in real estate. Um, that's historically been true. Real estate does go up and it does better in many cases than what you would get from the stock market. Now, not based on the appreciation, right? That's what I always thought. I was like, well, no, prices only go up maybe four or 5% a year on average in real estate. Well, that's true on the price side, but they forget the whole cash flow side that goes with it as well if you're renting out that property. See, so you understand that if you go and, and not to mention that, but if you even put a down payment and you don't have to get the full, you don't put all the money down, you actually get a mortgage on the property. Now you get this multiplier effect. For example, say you buy a property for $200,000, you put 20% down, that's $40,000 out of pocket. I'm not gonna go a little bit low here. Let's just say that that $40,000 down payment produces $300 a month or about, you know, just under $4,000 a year. Well, think about that. If it's $3,600 a year, yeah, you're still making about 7% or so. But if that property appreciates, that $200,000 property appreciates even just 10%, that's a $20,000 gain. Remember, what was my down payment? It was 40,000. So if I get a $20,000 gain of appreciation, that 10% gain, $20,000 on 40,000 is a 50% rate of return. I make 50% off just the appreciation alone. Why? Because I was leveraging the bank's money. So I'm making a big return on the cash that I actually used. And of course I'm making cash flow. So even that first year, even if it just took five years, let's just say it takes forever to get that 10% return, still, Five years doing that, plus making 3,600 a year, right? And of course, that's not including rent increases each year, things like that. Guys, it's not hard for me to make at least, in that case, 15 to $20,000 on top of the 20,000. What does that mean? That means in five years, guys, I've nearly doubled my money. And there's been times I've done better than that. I've actually made money in cases where I've made, like on one property in the last six years, I've made about 400% about return on my money, right? I mean, insane. Again, no guarantees. I'm not making any promises here, but that was the part I was missing. And when I realized I could make so much more money, then real estate became the thing that I wanted to do in this alternative investment game. Now, real estate's not the only thing, right? I'm investing in things like oil and gas. I even buy gold and silver too, right? I even invest in businesses from time to time, even in my own business, of course, but even other businesses from time to time. I'll invest in those kind of things. These are all alternative investments. This is Main Street investing. Wall Street just gives you that little option. Yes, you can buy and sell quickly, which is great. Some of the t deals I'm talking about here, you might have your money locked up for a few years, and that's fine. Especially if you know you can create more cash flow, more income off of it right away. That's one of my favorite things to do. Guys, I'm investing in things like raw land right now with a partnership where that 450,000 over the last three years has now started to generate about $11,000 a month of income for me. That's huge. And by the way, I reinvest that income again to build that portfolio bigger and faster. I'm compounding income rather than waiting for decades to compound my interest. That's the beauty of this, right? So anyways, that, that's the great thing is alternative investments. There are ways to do it. Now, how do you find those? You know, one of two ways, right? Either one, you do like what I did. You spend years trying to find the right relationships because the truth is if you want to be a passive investor like I am, you actually want to be putting your money with other people doing all the active work. Well, you have to find somebody trustworthy. I like to find people that have been doing this for at least the last 12 to 15 years minimum doing that specific strategy that they're doing. So if they're somebody who buys apartments, that's all they've done for at least the last 12 or 15 years. Not, not just barely switched over to the apartment space because they were buying single family homes. I want somebody who's been doing this a long time. They've been through recessions and, and ups and downs and things like that. So I'll put my money with people like them. 
And it's taking me a long time to build that network, but you could do the same thing. Yes, Google can help. Yeah, you could listen to other podcasts, watch this YouTube channel. Heck, I even got a Money Ripples podcast channel that also has guests that I bring on. But I'm not saying you invest with those people because some of those people I bring on are the people I would invest with. They're just people that have great stories. And so you want to be able to build up that, that team. And it could take years and years and years to finally find those people credible. So either do the DIY version, the do-it-yourself version, or two, you borrow somebody else's network. You use theirs. That's actually what we do with our company, Money Ripples. We actually have a network of people. It doesn't mean we recommend investments. We're not investment advisors. We're not saying you go do that. We're not even getting paid by these people. We're not actually telling them, like, don't pay us or anything. These are just our network that I use for my own investing or other clients have used as well. And then people can actually share that network with each other. That's one thing we do. And then we even offer a little bit of one-on-one -on -one help and guidance as well to see is that really a good fit or not based on your goals and objectives because unfortunately, even when you get into these groups that are out there that do offer their own network, they just tell you, hey, go talk to whomever and then you go throw your money at all these people. It's like throwing spaghetti on a wall hoping something sticks. It's very haphazard and it can actually cost you a lot of money. So you wanna make sure you have that one-on-one -on -one strategy and you've got those connections. That's if you want it more done with you versus the do it yourself type of method. So you can pick either way. Obviously, if you want more information on that, you can always go to moneyripples.com. We got a passive income calculator. It can show you how much passive income you create in the next 12 months with your current financial situation. So I would recommend if you're gonna do anything, go check that out today to figure out what alternative investments could be available to you.